speech to the other members of the um, community <coughs> just to share information in terms of what we're doing at the airport. We really appreciate that opportunity. So thanks for the invitation from the chamber. Um, <coughs> just to over the presentation today, I'll try to make it as fast as possible. Uh, the other I'm going to talk a little bit about our mission and our vision and the strategy that we're implementing in order to achieve <coughs> The economic impact of the, of the airport, the value that the airport has um, to, the, to the Houston region. Sequestration has been in the news recently, and I just speak a little bit about that. Um, of course, New Year's service is always very important. Uh, I always say at the airport, um, without New Year's service, it's like a mall without stores. It's just useless if you don't have air service. And of course, we have major construction projects taking place that I just speak a little bit about some of those construction projects. And of course, last but certainly not least, customer service that's very, very important to us. Um, our mission. Many people view the airport probably as um, your landlord. We just rent um, facilities to the airlines and the concessionaires. That's probably what we do. But why we do it is our mission. And we see our mission as um, to connect people, businesses, and cultures of the economy to the world. That's why we exist. So what we do is really somewhat different from why we do it. And this is what we consider to be our vision. So our vision. Our vision over the next five years, for example, is to be the standard of excellence and success in the Americas. Now, this is a very ambitious um, vision, but it's also a realistic vision. And if you notice, one of the things he says is in the Americas. We're not trying to be the best airport in the world, which is unrealistic. With the resources that we have available to us right now, we don't think we can, at this point in time, or over the next five years, compete with the, some of these airports in the Middle East or in Asia. We just don't have the resources um, to do it. But we're trying to be better than our neighbors up north. And anybody from Dallas here? Oh, good. So we're trying to be better than Dallas. <laughs> we're trying to be better than Atlanta in our, um, and the airports in the Americas, even up in Pearson in Canada. That's the airport we're targeting that we're trying to take for them. So we have a very ambitious but realistic vision. So how are we going to realize this vision and achieve the mission? We have four strategic priorities that are centered around um, employees, they're centered around customer, the facilities that we have at the airport, and of course, always financial, right? So these are the high level strategic priorities. High performance organization, what does that mean? It means we consistently achieve our objectives. Um, over a sustained period of time. Not achieve our objectives this year and then not achieve it next year. Over a sustained period of time. Um, Serve so the customer. Audit is very important to us. We have specific customer service targets. X percent of our customers must say they are happy to use the airport. And we have targets that we're trying to achieve. Specific smart goals. And also open an airport. You guys have used the facilities. And as I said, we're trying to be better than some of our competitors up north and in other places. But if you look at, for example, our Terminal D, for example, we're nowhere near where, our, that's our international terminal, nowhere near where our competitors are. I mean, our <coughs> terminal is, is being recorded, something that we find some nice work, dated, really dated. And, and um, so some of the construction projects that you'll see are to get these facilities up to speed, all right? So we can compete with other airports. And of course, for the future, what does that mean? In terms of measurement, achieve debt coverage at one point. We have to make sure we're fiscally responsible so we can fund all these projects that we find to get done at the airport. <clears throat> Economic impact. Many people probably don't realize it, but if you take the airport out of the region and throw it away, you're actually taking on $27 billion annually out of the economy. That's the impact the airport has on the region. We have approximately 40,000 direct employees at the airport, and we're responsible for approximately um, 200, over 200,000 jobs, just like the Houston airport system. And of course, we're also responsible for um, over 8 billion employee and cargo earnings. Right? That's, the, that's the impact. And how is this calculated? Of course, it's what we call direct um, wages. So people like myself who's employed at the airport, the airlines employ people at the airport. Also, um, when the aircrafts come in, Right? Somebody has to service the aircraft and they have to clean the aircraft. Right? So they have to hire people to do that. And of course, these people have to buy um, products and services from the business, the community, um, businesses in the community. So that's the multiplier effect. 
And I'll show you in, a, in another few slides where just one international plant, just one international plant has a $140 million impact on the region. We need hiring people to clean the air traffic, service the air traffic, mm -hmm. uh, to staff it. It's a major, major impact. That's why we spent so much money to try to get in here. In here. Major impact on the economy, on the region. Sequestration, you guys, I'm sure I've heard it. Um, they, everybody's cutting back. Um, we haven't had any significant impact on the airport in terms of the TSA, right? Um, the line's not doing so bad. Um, the customs and border protection, <coughs> uh, the people coming in from outside of the USA, have had some time. They've removed um, over time, right? So, and, you know, so the lines are getting longer. We had a target of 80% um, of our um, passengers going through the customs and border protection process within 30 minutes. We were actually getting very close to that same sequestration where it's down into the 68. So um, there's a new program that was just approved by the, the federal government that will allow us to actually pay for overtime before we couldn't do it. So there are five airports that have been selected. Ironically, three of them are from Texas. Um, our sales Dallas and three other entities that have been approved to do this. So we're really focused on customer service and getting our visitors through um, the CDP process within a very timely um, fashion. Um, New Year service, um, we currently we serve 70 international destinations. Um, most of it, of course, is in Mexico and uh, Central America. But we also serve locations in, in the Middle East, um, Qatar and um, United Arab Emirates, for example. On the domestic side, my slides are kind of messed up, but we, we serve a total of 118 destinations, um, 140 from IH and 49 uh, from Hobby. We have shared if we serve the same destination from Hobby and IH, we only count it once. We don't count it twice. If you're trying to figure out the math, that's why those numbers are not So recently, we started service um, with Turkish Airlines, direct flight from um, from Houston to Istanbul, again, $140 million impact on the economy. Just that one flight, right? Get to hire people, right? To service that aircraft, to provide fuel to the aircraft, to clean the aircraft, right? The people stay in the hotels that some of you guys might own, or they go to your restaurants and stuff. Major impact, just one flight um, coming in. Um, Importance of the type of aircraft, 777 uh, ER, these are newer aircraft. Um, they have longer range, but also they are quiet. They are more um, friendly to the environment as well. So that's why it's important that we get these new aircraft. Air China, this was the big one. Air China started um, July 11th. Why was this so significant to us? Anybody care to guess when was the last time Air China started a new road in the USA? Anyone want to guess? Nobody? Hold on. <laughs> 30 years ago. 30 years ago. And so there were many cities trying to get here in China to start in New York. Now we won. We got that. I mean, we spent a lot of time and money going back and forth, you know, to, to China to try to, you know, sell the city. Because you really don't sell the airport, you have to sell the city, right? And um, we were successful. So this is a major, major win um, for us. So now we have direct flight from Houston um, to Beijing right? four times per week. Again, 42 million, 142 million dollars impact on the economy. Lots of jobs are created every time you have these new trains coming in, especially international. Right? On the other hand, um, we have a very diverse um, set of airline services. So we have. Um, the high-end airlines of Qatar and Emirates and Air China and um, Turkish Airlines, but we also have the low-cost carriers such as um, Southwest on Hobby, and we have the ultra low-cost such as Spirit. <laughs> and Spirit has been growing tremendously. Now, of course, you know you can get some very good fares, right? That's Spirit, but don't carry anything. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a bag, you have to pay for it. Jacket, shoes, you might have to pay for it. Anything that you need. But but they really have been growing tremendously here um, in Houston, and they really have a very good um, audience that are uh, <coughs> customer group that really they'll fly spirit no matter what, right? So 
they're growing. And as you can see, they're now planted in Chicago, um, Las Vegas, Orlando, Denver, Detroit, and um, Los Angeles. So they've been growing tremendously here as well. And again, every time you have a new route, it's good for the airport system, it's good for the economy to get more passengers coming to the airport, to spend more money here, to spend more money on the community as well. So it's very important. Even though they might spend less money than the, the passengers on those guys might spend less money. Expanded um, flights. So we recent last year started, um, who was I speaking to about the A380? Um, this is the largest passenger aircraft in the world, right? And we have it here at our airport. First in Texas to have this. This current configuration holds 526 passengers. And I was, as I was saying earlier, that's because it's a three class configuration <coughs> first, business, and coach, right? So here's eight people in first class, 108 in business, and 400 plus in coach. So it's first class tickets are about 18,000. And you can get a seat and there's always booked out first class, 18,000 on as well. Um, with a single configuration, you can actually put 800, if you have all coach, you can put 800 people in this one aircraft. It's just an amazing. And guess what, as I was saying earlier, you hear that thing, you probably won't even hear it. Just look, 5.30 in the evening, just look at it, leaving the airport. You're not hearing anything, it's so quiet. It's an amazing engineering feat that they've done to create this aircraft. Um, and we have it here. We also have new aircraft in our cargo. Again, these, this is the 747 Some of the top of the flight is gone. Again, one other reason why we emphasize the importance of these aircraft is, of course, noise. That's one of the biggest complaints that we get from the community, right? It's noise and the airport is noisy. So the more we get these newer aircraft, the less noisy it will be, and the less noise mitigation uh, we'll have to do in the community. So that's why it's important for us to get these new aircraft here. Um, we, uh, United started operations with a new, it's called the Dreamliner. You guys probably heard of all the problems in the media with the fires and stuff in it. So they have worked that out now. Um, and it's a really nice airplane. Um, it's cool, the windows, you can, you don't, you tint. It has a button that you can actually tint the windows. It goes dark or light, you don't do the shutter thing anymore. The ceilings are much higher, it's designed such that um, it's pressurized such that you feel that jet lag. Really nice airplane, especially if you're doing a long um, distance flight. So we have this as well. So we have all the new aircraft here at the Houston Airport system. Let me talk about some of the construction projects real quick. We're trying to redo the master plan for all master plan for all three airports, um, Harvey, IAH, and Allentown. And um, we're scheduled to complete them by the end of the the end of this year. We'll be doing the public input, community outreach. You're going to see the town hall meeting being scheduled. <coughs> So you guys can come and look at our plans and say whether you like it or you don't like it. Most of the time people ask, hey, are you going to do this the wrong way? Is it going to be noisy where we're living? All of that input and we'll answer all of those questions. So those meetings are going to be scheduled for two. Um, so as I said, one of the things we're trying to do is to be better than the other airports in the, um, in the Americas. But if you look at some of our competitors, LAX and Hartsfield Jack in Atlanta. Their international terminal is far superior to ours. So one of the major projects we're looking at right now is to redo the entire terminal. Now, of course, that's going to take maybe the next six, seven years. But in the meantime, we need to dress it up a little, right? Put some lipstick on it. It's really bad. I mean, really, really bad. And so what we did recently, this is what it looked like um, up to a few months ago. And we just did some renovation. We changed the carpet here, we put some artwork in, we changed the ceiling in we put some lights in, we painted it. Um, but again, just dressing up. We're looking at renovating that entire um, terminal. So you'll hear a whole lot more about that's one of the big projects that's going to be coming up. We're doing the planning, now and then we'll move into design. So terminal B, I don't know if you guys traveled recently on terminal B. It was really really bad. So we've completed the first phase of the construction of um, B, and that's on the south side. If you go to B North, it still looks just the same. I'm being recorded, but it's kind of crappy. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're 
have done the south it was it's really nice on the south side and in the future we'll also be doing the north side it's a whole lot more space and that we have the concessions program is a whole lot better and just to give you an idea this is what it looked like before these belts just really congested and just just, just like a dungeon really and so of course we built we did the new um uh terminal on uh what we call it terrace on the south side and of course you have to have a ribbon cutting ceremony every time you finish something so everybody can get their photo up so this was the ribbon cutting ceremony and this is what it looks like if you look at the high ceiling the glass and the beauty of it also the concessions have been designed such that when you're in the a lot of people have this angst about being in the um concessions uh, space because they're away from their gate and they don't want to miss their flight. Literally, you can sit right at your gate in the whole room area and just reach over and purchase a drink. Of course, it's right there. So we expect a whole lot of um, additional revenue, well, united anyway, from just the way that this is designed. I think people are going to spend a whole lot <coughs> of money in the airport now because they're more comfortable. I'm right at the gate, I can buy a drink or eat some food right there, and I'm looking at my aircraft, it's right there. I don't have to worry about me. Really nice design. Um, so the big one going on right now. This is the an overview of Hobby Airport. I hope you guys can see this. So multiple things. We're building a new international terminal at Hobby, right? So we're going to be having international flights. So it's going to be doing it's going to be doing international flights at Hobby. This is what Hobby looks like right now, all right? And so if there's an international terminal that's going to go here, and I'll show you some more slides. The other thing problem we had at Hobby was parking. You guys have traveled through Hobby recently. You can't find parking, especially during the holidays. So we had a decision to build a parking lot here, or we could build this one here. Here's the problem, though. Is there's a road going through here. So if we build it here, we have to move the road around the parking lot. So if we build it here, we have to move this warehouse, which is in the middle of it right now. Okay. So we decided we're going to build it here. This is where the new parking garage is going to be. There's a new road here that's going to go around it. And this is where the international terminal is going to be initially with 5K right here. This is the existing terminal. And this is the existing garage right here. We have to build what we call a cup central utility plant because we'll need more heating and cooling for the additional building. We're also going to be building a new central plant. And this is what we call a um, cooling tower that supports the central utility plant. So there's a terminal is going to be built. At the same time, we're going to be building a garage. At the certain, same time, a new roadway. And at the same time, a central utility plant. All of that is going to be taking place and be completed by 2015. Okay? Uh, again, this is just another view of it, the new garage, the roadway, central plant. And when it's finished, this is how the entire thing will look. This is, a, this is the existing domestic terminal. This will be the new international terminal right here. This is the new international concourse, new garage, new roadway, central utility plan. Um, how is this going to be transitioned? If I have this, uh, this one, you can see it. See a quick overview. This is what your animation is exactly what's going to happen on the timeline in which it, in which it's going to happen real quickly. So these are the piles that's going to be going down, right? For the foundation work for the terminal. If you look all over, a lot of construction is going to be taking place in time. Foundation work is going to be done here for the terminal. Central plant is going to be constructed. These helix are going to be torn down. Utilities are going to be relocated here. Meanwhile, the roadway is going to be built here. Foundation work is taking place for the garage right here. Remember, we're relocating this road here. Terminal construction, half of the garage being built. Central plant being completed. Foundation work for the other part of the garage. All of this taking place at the same time, right here. Terminal construction taking place. Second half of the garage, the storage going up, the four story garage, right here. All of that taking place. There's a lot of work going inside, but you can't see inside this terminal right now. They're going to finish it inside the terminal. Meanwhile, the garage will still be constructed. We may open half the garage in the beginning and then open the next half when we're finished. Then we'll be putting in the jet bridges, which you should see very soon. Garage is finished. Oh, this is a new walkway from the garage from the existing garage to the new terminal. Jet bridges go in and then we'll have all the airplanes coming in and then you guys can fly international or that office. 
but all of that will be taking place and be completed by the end of 2015. So lots of work. Um, this is just some rendering. This is what the entrance will look like, the new roadway. Roadway, we don't have enough space right now, it's congested. Um, just some rendering of the new facility. When you come over that bridge from the new parking garage, this is what you'll see. It's kind of congested right now, it's going to be open, high ceiling, lots of light, glass. Um, ticket counter area, other rendering of this frontage. This is just a cross section, this is going to be baggage claim down here. And of course, here is where you go to the security check. Just another rendering of what the terminal is going to look like. This is just another view. This is from the top of the garage. If you're a new garage, you look at this is the walkway across the new roadway, and this is the new international terminal with the um, fire gates. Customer service. So, very important to us. Um, what are some of the things we're doing? We have um, a program called PreCheck. And PreCheck basically, you yes, give your life story to the TSA, tell them everything about yourself, who you had a crush on when you were in junior high school, mm -hmm. and then you're allowed to travel through the security checkpoint without taking off your shoe or taking off your laptop or your bag or taking off your jacket. It's really cool. And they're expanding free checks to everybody now for $85 for five years. It's a really good deal to go through a security checkpoint without having to take off your shoe. So you guys should look into doing it. It's really convenient. We also have what we call um, one stop. We're the only airport. I think one of the airports starts with one stop. If you coming in, if you're coming in on an international flight and you don't have check bags, you don't have to go through the entire process. If you make one stop and you have a special pass, you just leave the airport. So that's really nice as well. People really appreciate it. We recently started having these courtesy um, buses or courtesy shuttles. Some some of the parking lots are very very far from the terminal building. And sometimes you have people, you know, who have kids, parents who have kids with them, or might be elderly, and it's a long walk for them, so they really appreciate it. And we started valet parking also. So you can park at both airports, even at Intercontinental, you can park your car anywhere at any terminal, and you can pick it up at any terminal when you get that valet parking. And that's going really well for us to help those. And um, global entry, again, um, we expanded global entry um, enrollment. We have an enrollment center downtown right now, so you don't have to come to the airport to enroll for global entry. And with global entry, if you're entering the country, you don't have to go through the regular process like everybody. You go to a kiosk, do your biometrics, um, put your scan your passport, and you're in. That also is going to be expanded soon. We're doing a pilot now called automated passport control. All US citizens coming into Houston will actually now walk up to a kiosk rather than before you'd have to fill this form up, go to the custom um, border protection agent. You'll actually go to a kiosk, you enter your information, you answer the questions, you don't have to fill any form or no. And once you walk up to the agent, all that information will already be in the system. Remember before you have to go to this agent, you take your passport, type stuff in, the lines get long, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one of the initiatives that we're working on to reduce the time that everybody stays in line. Initially, it's going to be US citizens only. Then we're going to expand it to everybody coming in the US. So these are just some of the customer service efforts that we're working on at the airport. And last but certainly not least, we have a volunteer program. We have volunteers on a platform of customer service at the airport for us. And um, these folks volunteer their time, and they're very, very helpful to the providing um, whether it's direction or the general information about the airport. Very, very helpful to us. And we are always open to volunteers. If you know anybody who would like to volunteer at the airport, you get free parking. And when you're traveling, don't forget free parking as well. So there are some perks, right? And pretty much that's it. Um, I'm available to answer any questions that you guys need.